I welcome the debate today in relation to this report by the Ombudsman for Children. I think it's a very uh, in-depth critique of child poverty in relation to uh, the pre-pandemic and post-pandemic world we live in. And it obviously lays out uh, a policy to address the historical legacy of deprivation of children in this country. And the pandemic has done a number of things, some terrible things, but it has, it has uh, opened up the chasm that have the fault lines, as you would say, in society on what, uh, you know, what we really are about. And um, it has opened up that kind of chasm of disadvantage and how children are treated in our society in relation to social injustice. Um, and it's kind of the ironic thing about this debate it has taken a virus that has killed millions of people and has caused absolute chaos across the world to basically have uh, an impact on uh, homelessness in this country. Uh, prior to the pandemic, there was over 10,000 people in emergency accommodation. Now that is um, about 6,000. And the, uh, the, uh, in relation to children, it's gone down to about half of what it was. Now that's half than it should be. But it's incredible that it has taken uh, a, a invisible ever is to do that. And, you know, I think the barometer of any society is how uh, children are treated. And children obviously can't, you know, we're, we speak for children, we have children, you know, and so forth, and we kind of, we're a device for children. And, you know, that's a very proud thing to be in this chamber to speak on behalf of children. Um, and in relation to homelessness, that is a kind of a legacy that Minister and your colleagues in the Cabinet have to address because it's just not acceptable that children in the 21st century in Ireland don't have a home to go to, but they have a hotel. Now, anybody that can stand up here and say, with a straight face, uh, that's acceptable, well, I think they're in the wrong game. Um, and just in relation to uh, children in poverty, you know, it wasn't far long ago, um, the Labour Party with John Burton uh, kind of had policies t which were Thatcher-esque in relation to uh, single parents. You know, uh, her policies have kind of had a legacy issue, and I go back to the historical le legacy issues in relation to child poverty. You know, the Labour Party will not be forgiven for a lot of things in working class communities, but one thing they will not be forgiven for, particularly on single parents, is what John Burton done to uh, single parents, and that's on the record. So, Minister, you know, the, the, the report is very, very good, but like everything, there's many reports uh, that we see in, in this House. Some of them never see the light of day, some of them gather dust, but this has to be implemented in, in, in its full to address um, them legacy issues. And them legacy issues are kind of, you know, because children one day will be adults and they will go out and work and so forth, but families that kind of face poverty uh, where, you know, there's, there's a family member not working, they may be on a very kind of low income, um, and that has an insidious effect on children in relation to uh, educational disadvantage. You know, uh, you look at, in particular in Dublin, uh, if you come from a certain postcode in Dublin, nine times out of ten you're going to go to third level education. If you come from another part of Dublin, the chances of going to uh, third level education is, dr goes dramatically down, right? Now, there's no difference between that child that lives in a certain part of Dublin to that other part, the other child that lives in another part. So what is wrong? It's nothing about intelligence. It's about opportunity and income and kind of the social kind of inequalities that we kind of live under. Um, so obviously, Minister, that's, I, I'm sure you will address them. You know, I don't, I don't kind of doubt your bona fides in relation to uh, trying to address the kind of the historical uh, and societal issues in relation to child poverty. Uh, but the main thing is that this report, as I said, is the critique uh, it, will, it looks at kind of the post-pandemic world, which, you know, hopefully we're coming out of that. But it gives an opportunity, you know, for governments across the world to kind of, you know, look at what they were doing wrong. Now, maybe they can't correct what they've been doing wrong uh, because of their policies. Um, but it's important that, you know, that this um, uh, critique uh, looks at a different uh, mindset. Uh, because... You know, you, you go back 18 months ago, where it seems like years ago, uh, to the general election. And the general election was about a number of things. The main thing it was about public services and the lack of public services when people couldn't get them. That's the reason why Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil went backwards, not forward. And they've been in government for the last 10 years. That's the reason why they went uh, you know, back 
and other kind of uh, political kind of entities went forward because they were saying things that you know were obvious to try correct. So if you can correct them over three and a half years, which hopefully you will, I'm not kind of been like partisan in some ways. I want I want to see that nobody homelessness, and I'm sure everybody in this in this chamber want, doesn't want to see homelessness. But there's something in, in, inert in relation to why it's political policies is why people are in a homeless situation, why uh, poverty exists, why inequality exists. It doesn't just exist for the, the sake of it. It exists because of policy, and it's up to you then to change it. Thank you.